Lonely Dr. Hoofs, Chapter 11 Time is not written in stone. Octavia Octavia just looked at Luna, not believing what she had just learned. Luna sighed. I guess you had a right to know, but I'd have preferred it if I had dreamt of my first time. Having you find out this way is much more embarrassing. Octavia didn't know what to say. She had actually had a look into the princess's memories. Put aside the unlikelihood of it all, there were two things that disturbed her. Number one. The ponies had actually despised the sisters to the extent of wanting them court-martialed after the reunion. How had they come to rule Equestria if that was true? Number two. She had died. In Luna's memory she had died, and spoken of the doctor in the past tense as if he had died a long time ago. So that is why Prin... I mean... I mean Celestia hates me? She thinks I abandoned you in that cold place? Luna nodded, her expression showing the shame she felt. It had been a dying friend's request but she obviously didn't like the idea of having defiled Celestia's memory of her. Luna tried to read her friend's expression, but couldn't find what she was looking for. There was no blame, no accusing stare, just a look of utter disbelief. Octavia, there is something else. Octavia's ears perked up, waiting for Luna to go on. But Luna did not speak. Instead, she trotted to the chest at the end of the bed and opened it. After a few moments, which felt like an eternity for Octavia, Luna produced a small wooden box and levitated it over to her with her magic. What... what is this? Luna turned her gaze away, desperate not to look her in the eye when she said what she was going to say. After... well... After we got rescued by a caravan traveling to the Crystal Empire, I went back to where I had buried your body. Please understand that I did it because I wanted something to remember you by. I dug you out and, and took your blood-stained bow tie with me. Octavia opened the small box, and sure enough, there was her bow tie. It was a little ripped in places, and there was blood on it. My blood, she thought with a shiver, but it was in good condition otherwise. What caught her attention, however, was the second item in the box, a pure white envelope on which was written, To Octavia, from the doctor. Octavia froze a moment before she grabbed the ladder and ripped the envelope open. Finally, maybe the doctor offered her an opportunity to go home. She read it. Dear Octavia, I am leaving this letter in Moon Lily's diary in the hope she will meet you in the near future. I am fine, well, as far as the conditions here would allow any pony to be fine. I hope you are good and unharmed as well. What exactly happened I will have to explain later, but I don't have much time to write now and there are important things that you must know if you want me to find you with the TARDIS. First things first. You should stay with Moon Lily, or Luna as her name might be by the time you read this, and do whatever you need to do to keep her safe. Listen, this is important. For some reason her connection to Yggdrasil is stronger than Celestia's. If any pony gets their hoofs on her, they can control it and time itself. No dimension will be safe if she is lost again. I trust you with this task, Octavia. Next up, so I can find you, you need to find and touch an object that is not from that time. An object that travels through time and space itself would be perfect. Wear it close to you. Your touch will cause a weak but detectable reaction in the time vortex. I can track that and find you. Hold out, my friend. I am coming for you. Your friend, the doctor. 
At first Octavia didn't understand. She was to find an object that had traveled through time? Her shoulder sank, and she let her head hang, when her gaze fell on the bow tie once again. Of course! she exclaimed and reached the hoof into the box to get the bow tie, her bow tie, out and put it on. But then it happened. The moment she touched it, the bow tie sprang to life as if it was a predator that had waited for its prey. Like a snake it slithered its way up her foreleg until it reached her neck and closed around it. Octavia was barely able to scream in terror before it started to press down her windpipe. Luna was at her side in a flash, trying to rip the bow tie from her friend's neck without hurting her. Luna didn't understand what was going on. She herself had touched it countless times, but nothing like this had ever happened. She tried to rip it off, of Octavia's neck, but the fabric didn't budge an inch. Soon her friend stopped struggling and lay limp in her forelegs. No, not again. Not again! She screamed, clutching Octavia's lifeless body, sobbing loudly when Celestia rushed into the room. Octavia felt as if she was floating. She was looking down on a beautiful planet. Its orange surface, the lavender oceans, it was simply marvelous. Where was she? Was she dead? Was this the eternal herd? Slowly she floated down to its surface, through pink clouds and an air that smelled so sweet and relaxing. Beneath her she could see a giant city covered by a giant glass ball. There were alicorns on its streets going on about their daily business. It would have been a peaceful sight had it not been for the few several armed groups that headed to several grey cylinders. As they disappeared in them, she instinctively knew what they were. Tardis, she muttered to herself. Now the knowledge of where she was came to her as well, without her knowing how. This, this must be Gallopfrey, the doctor's home. But just as she thought that, a brilliant white light filled the sky and set the very air on fire. The silver grass on the fields around her was turned to ash. The lavender oceans evaporated, and the screams of the burning alicorns in the city were deafening. It wasn't over quickly, however, and Octavia could watch as mothers tried to get their children to safety before they all were burned into a crisp. Armed alicorns tried to buy them time by creating shields with their magic, but it was no use. They were all burned, and no pony survived. The stink of smoke and burnt flesh was enough to make her vomit. Who was responsible for this? Who had destroyed this paradise? She floated back into the orbit, not looking back. She didn't want to see them burn any longer. There, in the orbit of Gallopfrey, she found a pale blue unicorn mare with a white and blue mane and tail. Her eyes were rolled up to the white and her muzzles stand wide open. Octavia felt herself being drawn towards it until she actually floated past her teeth, but instead of the mare's digestive system she found herself in the TARDIS control room. It was on fire and destroyed at several places. But even through the sounds of explosions and sparks erupting from cables, Octavia could hear crying. She followed the noise and soon found its source. She saw herself hunched over something. Her coat was dirty and she was bleeding at several places, but the pain obviously wasn't the cause for her other self to be crying. As she moved in closer to see what it was, or better, whom she was holding in her forelegs. It was the doctor. His lifeless figure had its eyes rolled up to the whites, while half of his face was a gaping wound. His brown coat, dark with his own blood, his wonderful blue eyes, dead. She put a hoof to her face, so the doctor had destroyed this world. Why would he do that? Wasn't it his home? 
she heard her other self scream something. Why? Why did you use it? You knew it would kill you. I told you it would. Each sentence was brought forth between sobs. That was when Octavia felt something on her lips, her vision blurred, and the next thing she saw was Celestia giving her muzzle-to-muzzle -muzzle first aid. Octavia gasped and drew air into her starving lungs. Then she rolled over on her side, coughing violently. From that position she could see herself in a mirror on the opposite wall. The previously tattered and blood-stained bow tie was now laying comfortably loose around her neck and looked as good as new now. There were no blood stains and no damages.